Hi guys, um, I hope you're all doing well, I hope your families are well, friends, I hope things where you are, are okay. So here in England it's a beautiful day, um, it's actually really quite hot today, well for England it's really hot, and um, I've come up to one of my favourite places, um, this is in the National Park near where I live to come for a walk and a bit of a run as well. And um, I wanted to talk to you today about, about how you can study if you don't have much time. Because I know that obviously some of us at the moment, we've got almost too much time to be at home. Um, but other people are still working or they still have commitments. And it can be a real challenge to know how can you fit your studying into a normal life. So when I lived in China, I spent part of my time at a university where I was teaching and I spent part of my time in a small village in the countryside where I was practicing Tai Chi. And um, while I was in the village at the Tai Chi school, I would practice Tai Chi for perhaps between six and eight hours a day. So it was kind of like having a job, really. And um, when I came back to England, obviously that wasn't possible because I had to get a real job and I had, you know, family and a normal life kind of thing. And it's something that I have struggled with ever since I came home five years ago. And I was okay. I could do some practice, obviously, not six or eight hours, but I could practice and it was okay. And about one year ago, I met my boyfriend. And that was a very lovely thing, it made me very, very happy. Uh, but of course, having a, another person, a person that you really care about in your life, means you want to spend your time with them. You want to spend your free time with them and be with them at the weekend. And that meant that I was practicing even less. And it really bugged me. It really bothered me. It made me really unhappy and kind of stressed because I felt like I was losing everything I worked so hard for in China. And eventually, after several months of not really knowing how to deal with the problem, I realised that as long as I practised every day, even if it was only a very small amount, it was okay. It wasn't lots and lots, it wasn't going to make me move forwards like as if I could do three hours, <coughs> but doing half an hour or 45 minutes is a lot better than doing nothing. Now I was speaking with a student last week and we were talking about this, about how difficult it can be to fit your studying around everything else. And we talked about perhaps doing a little bit before you go to work or school or wherever you go. And even if it's just 10 to 15 minutes before you leave the house, doesn't sound like much, but actually in the course of a week, that's an hour, more or less. And then if you can do another 10 or 15 minutes when you get home, hey, you've done half an hour. That's amazing. And over a whole week, half an hour every day is one, two, three, four and a half hours. And then if you add that up by four weeks in a month and so on and so on, it starts to become a reasonable amount of study. And I would say even more, if you only have time to do something for five minutes, it's better to do five minutes than nothing. Even if all you can do is review three or four new bits of vocabulary, that's great, because you took one step forwards. And it doesn't really matter how big the step is, but if you take a step forwards every day, eventually you'll get to where you want to be. So, that's my suggestion for the week. Do what you can, be happy with what you've been able to do, because whatever it is, 
it better than doing nothing. So I hope you all have a really great weekend, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Um, we've got another day like this, so tomorrow's going to be great. Sunday is about 10 degrees colder. Um, but yeah, take care. Let me know what you think and um, have fun. Stay safe. Bye.